Exactly how important is CO2 to your planet aquarium and do you actually need it to be successful? In this video, I'm going to share my experience when injecting CO2 to the 55 gallon behind me and I'm also going to show off the equipment that I use to get that job done. So let's go ahead and dive in. What is going on everybody and welcome. If this is our first time meeting, I am Kendall Water from Otter Creek Aquatics and here on this channel we talk about things like fish breeding, planted tanks, and even some tips and tricks that could help you grow your aquarium keeping skills. So if you're interested in learning any more about the aquarium hobby, then go ahead and consider subscribing and ringing that little notification bell. That way you get notified every time I upload my weekly videos. Now let's go ahead and dive into that planted tank CO2. So the style regulator I use on my CO2 system is an Aquatec. And this is actually a company based out of California. And this specific regulator has all the bells and whistles that you don't necessarily need, but it makes for a much easier and reliable experience. So I'm actually not gonna talk a lot about this regulator for, I'm gonna save that for an upcoming video. I'm gonna go through this entire thing and show you every single component that this thing has to offer. But if you wanna check out it and all the other regulators that Aquatech has to offer, I'll link them down in the description so you can go check those out. So the next component that makes up my CO2 system is the bubble counter. Now this is the bubble counter that actually came with the Aquatech regulator. But as you can see, this part didn't fit over the 55 gallon edge and I kind of snapped it. And it has another, op another mounting option which is suction coupling it to the glass. But because this is so top heavy, whenever you would suction cup it, it would either lean forward or try to tip to the side. So I actually switched back to my old bubble counter, which I got from a Fluval all-in-one CO2 system when I first got into CO2. And it was from the 88 gram system. And as you can see right here, this is a really reliable and I really love this external bubble counter that I have just had nothing but good experiences from. Now I wouldn't actually recommend this Fluvault all-in-one system because it doesn't have a solenoid on the regulator which allows you to plug your regulator into a timer. So either you have to turn it off manually or your CO2 is going to run non-stop. Plus it has really tiny cartridges which runs out super fast and they're pretty expensive to replace. But if you do want to check out this bubble counter, I'll link it down in the description as well. As long with anything else that I talk about in this video, I think it's only like 12 bucks and I've really fallen in love with this bubble counter and I've had no issues with it. So the last piece that makes up this entire system is the CO2 diffuser. And it's actually a Jardy, Jardy, Jardly, Jardly. Yeah, Jardly. And it is a two inch diffuser which is recommended for 50 to 75 gallon tanks. I knew, I know they do have one that's a little bit smaller. I think it's from like 20 to 50 gallons and it's a 1.5 inch. But you wanna be extremely careful if you get a glass diffuser because when you're putting the CO2 line on, if you push it too far or too hard, you will actually break the glass stem, which I did the first time I got one and it cut me pretty bad but that's all we're going to talk about for that but other than that it sits right in the corner of your aquarium the suction cups are really good i haven't had any trouble with it falling off and it diffuses the co2 really well so i highly recommend this company and there's some other cool glass diffusers or you can get some other different type of diffusers some plastic one and they're gonna work just as well. So just do your research and look what size you need for the size aquarium that you're gonna be putting your CO2 on. So now that we've covered my CO2 system, I wanna talk a little bit about what CO2 actually does for aquarium plants and planted tanks. So a lot of misconceptions is that CO2 is actually food for your aquarium plants. And this is just absolutely not true. 
The basic technique behind CO2 for a planted tank is to open those plants up more to allow food to get to them easier. Just to put things in perspective, and I'm actually gonna steal this from Aquarium Co-op. If you were to go to the gym on a regular basis, like, let's say every single day, over time you would start to build muscle mass and the same for aquarium plants. If you fed them every day or once a week, eventually they're gonna start to grow because they're getting the required nutrient it takes to do that. But if you were to inject CO2, or if you were going to the gym every day and you were to inject yourself with steroids, you would be able to build that muscle mass at a much faster rate. It's not actually doing anything for your muscles except for opening it up and allowing that extra work that you're doing to build it faster. And it's the same for aquarium plants that CO2 going into that tank is going to open those plants up and allow them to consume more nutrients that's going to allow them to grow faster. And just vice versa, if you were to take your plants off the CO2 or you were to stop taking the steroids, you would start to lose that muscle mass at an even faster rate than if you weren't taking the steroids or you weren't injecting that CO2. But food and fertilizers isn't actually the only thing that goes into CO2 and helping your plants grow. If you're using a higher light, let's say you get just a regular aquarium setup with the hood with the little bulbs in it, or you buy a super bright LED that is meant for growing plants, like a Fluval 3.0. So if you have that higher light, it's also going to allow that photosynthesis to get much stronger and allow those plants to open up more and consume more nutrients, which is gonna allow them to grow faster. Whereas if you have a low light setup, they're not gonna get that full good photosynthesis that they're not gonna be able to intake as much of those nutrients or the nitrates or ammonia that's in the water the plants aren't going to be able to consume all of that if you don't give them the proper light. So this is why they say that CO2 systems are an extremely high setup because they usually have a super high LED that is meant for growing plants rather than a super low light that you're just using to grow, let's say, Java Fern or Anubias. So an Anubius is actually a good example of CO2 usage. So you can put an Anubius in a low light setting and you're gonna get plant growth if the algae don't consume it, but that's for a different video. So if you have an Anubius and you have it under a low light, you can actually get, let's say, one leaf every week. And then the next week, you go and you put a Fluval 3.0 on that tank and start injecting CO2. Now you can start growing leaves maybe every two days or three days or even every day because that light is allowing that plant to open up more, it's getting more light. That CO2 is getting to that plant that's allowing it to open up and consume those nutrients that it needs to grow. Whereas when it's really low light and it's closed off, it's getting the nutrients that it needs to grow, but it's just not consuming it fast enough. And when you look at a planet tank and how they're supposed to consume the nitrates in the water, this will be an indication if you have a low light or a high light. is because even though your tank is full of plants, you will still have a semi-high nitrate level because that light is not getting down in there enough to allow those plants to photosynthesize properly, which is not allowing them to consume enough nutrients, which is the same exact way when it comes to CO2. So when you have your light on point, you have your CO2 on point, you have your fertilizers on point, you can do anything. Your plants will grow phenomenally and you will have an amazing looking planet tank. So now that you've seen my CO2 system and you've hopefully learned a little bit more about what CO2 does for a planet aquarium, 
Let me know down in the comments below if you're injecting CO2 in your plant and tanks. And if so, what equipment are you using to get the job done? Also, let me know your favorite aquarium plant down in the comments below. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you're not already, go ahead and consider subscribing and ringing that little notification bell. That way you get notified when I upload my weekly videos. Thank you all for watching. Keep following your dreams. Keep inspiring. And until next time, everybody, see you.